Now, 7 News continues with High School Red Zone. Welcome back to the show this second weekend of action in the month of November and in the three upper states, several teams still alive. We had three matchups, in fact, of area squads going each against each other tonight. Let us start out in Clinton, where it was a battle of an unbeaten Clinton team against a one loss Belton Honeypath team. Todd Summers has the recap. Two of the top teams in 3A spring off in Clinton as the Red Devils play host to BHP. Midway through the first quarter, Bears facing third long. A.J. Pendleton throws deep, and Eli Strickland makes the catch and takes off 76 yards for the touchdown. Bears lead 7-0. On the ensuing kickoff, Justin Copeland fields the ball at his own five-yard line and shows off his top in speed as he races 95 yards for the touchdown. Game tied at 7. Early second quarter, third and short for the Red Devils. Jaden Robinson gets the first down and a whole lot more, taking it 47 yards for the touchdown. Clennon on top, 14 to 7. Midway through the second quarter, Bryce Young fakes the pitch, looks long, and finds Justin Copeland wide open across the middle for a 75 yard touchdown. Red Devils lead. 21 to 7. Under two minutes to play in the first half. The Bears answer. Quez Henderson takes the direct snap, turns the corner, and he takes off, racing 36 yards for the touchdown as BHP cuts the Clinton lead to 21-13 at the half. After a scoreless third quarter, the Red Devils strike midway through the fourth quarter as Justin Copeland gets the ball on the end around, and he makes the most of his only carry of the contest, going 55 yards for his third touchdown of the night. Clinton leads 28 8 to 13 and the Red Devils defense does the rest late fourth quarter Brett Young and Bryson James combine for the sack to help the Red Devils shut out the Bears in the second half to get the victory final score 28 to 13. Super proud of our players super proud of our coaches defense played a heck of a ball game tonight. We execute like we supposed to prepare throughout the week hey, I just trust my guys and that's what we did we got the win. Big players make big plays and big games and Justin did that tonight. And Clinton for the high school red zone I'm Todd Summers. Other side of their bracket, Chapman trying to continue its late season run. They've been a hot team. They entered the night having won six straight, took on Seneca. Alvin Lewis zips into the end zone, 8-0. Panthers, Jackson Burnett to Zay Poole. Seneca eventually took a 10-8 lead, but Chapman moved back in front 15-10. And then look at the moves by Mathai Scott. Oh, that was a thing of beauty. 22 to 10 Chapman in the second. After an interception, Lewis spins it around left side. That's a better than 50 yard run. And the Panthers are up 29 to 10. Then, after a Seneca touchdown, cut it to 36 to 29 to 17. Sean Cunningham, 85 yards to make it 36 17 Chapman. Just before the half, Coleman Gray to Scott. And the Panthers roll on to the next round. Battle of the number one seeds upcoming as they'll take on Clinton, winning 57 to 29. The Daniel Lions, a team you don't want to have to face home or away. Well, tonight, Blaine Simons and crew ready for Woodruff. Daniel trying to extend its overall winning streak to 36 games. One of the top receivers in the area, Eli Merck on a 50-yarder. A little hop step at the end to get into the end zone for the early score. And then Simons to Myson Kelly, the Clemson-bound receiver. Can do a lot of things for you on the football field. That was a nice connection. Kelly again on the receiving end as the Lions jumped out to a quick 21-0 lead. Big yards after the catch in the 79-yarder. Daniel trying to stay on course for another state title. They roll on to the big win. Other side of their bracket, Powdersville playing last night, looking to avenge last year's playoff loss against Chester. And Thomas Williams and his fellow seniors we're not going to be denied. Williams 30 yard run makes it look early for the early 7 0 lead. Eli Hudgens doing great things this season once more, connecting with Drake Sloan in a 20 yarder. Quick 15 0 lead for Powdersville after they converted the two. And then Hudgens showing you his running ability, making like Raheem Jeter on that sprint into the end zone. 22 zip. Hudgens had a big night. Powdersville's 11 and 1. They're moving on now in a colossal showdown against Daniel next week. Another battle of number one seeds in the 4A upper state. Some teams still alive after one entire region from our area was eliminated last week. But Greenville and South Point, the featured matchup, if you will. South Point was number one in the state. Here come the Red Raiders ready to do battle in the all black and coming up with some defense. Noah Wallace on the pick. They've got a turnover belt. Yeah, 
We got some guys who are trying to win a belt in a different sport in this building. Then Bryson Drummond to Cameron Perfeter. And a 24 to 14 lead for Greenville in the fourth quarter. Would it be enough? Malachi Marshall, the South Point touchdown. They went for two and didn't get it. And Greenville denied a late try by South Point to win it. And the Red Raiders win a ninth straight game, 24 to 20. Greg Porter's team moving on to the next round. They'll get the winner of the North Augusta game, which went to Catawba Ridge. So Catawba Ridge and Greenville in the next round as Catawba Ridge won 34 to 14 against North Augusta. Indian Land and Westside, meanwhile, at the home of the Rams and a Westside team looking for a 10th win on the season. Cutter Woods, their quarterback, began the night with 2,500 yards and 24 passing TDs, connecting with Jamison Wilson there. And then Hunter Puckett doing the honors, bowling in for a 7-0 lead in the second quarter. Woods later hooks up with Wilson. Wilson does a nice job getting to the pylon. That's going to make it 14 to 7. Woods building on that season total. This time to Wilson. They become quite the combination. Woods later to Jamar Boston. Westside holds off Indian Land. Rams get a 10th win on the year. They move on to the next round. They'll await the winner of Saturday's game between Northwestern and Greenwood as the Eagles try to pull off another upset on the road in the 4A upper state. When we come back, you might call it a crusade on the local football field. Southside Christian St. Joe's meeting for a second time. Let's see if there was high drama in this one. We think so. That action and more is just ahead.